Welcome to Mama Sarah's Story Time. You came back for Chapter 7. Keep your head down. Oh, this is the very sad tale of the teacher who taught me everything she knew. It's so sad. But follow me anyways. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Mom, uh, Jumbo Mama. And then don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Mama Sarah's Story Time. You've got to use four words. You have to spell it and punctuate it correctly. Okay, what else? Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to let me know what platform you're watching me on because I love interacting with you. I'm getting all sorts of questions about the videos and, and questions about the content. So pile it on. I love talking to you. Okay, let's get started today. Mama Sarah says, never say never. Chapter seven, keep your head down. At the girls' school, I had the pleasure of being schooled, and I use the term loosely, by Mrs. X for history. Excuse me, history. I got in trouble with her once. She took away my recess for not rolling my R's. At that time, schools were still British-based. They hadn't strayed far from the original colonial models of instruction. And that was a nice way of saying that anyone could treat anyone else perceived as less any darn way they pleased. My parents told me to keep my head down and I'd be fine. Yeah, right. They forgot about expats like Mrs. X. Keep this thought at the back of your mind. We learned later that she was the only legitimately credentialed teacher at our school. At least that's what they said out on the play yard. Mrs. X looked like kindling in clothes. She was so skinny that instead of thinking, my word, what a slender woman, you found yourself asking how her shape would change if she did put a wimpy burger down her gullet. Her stockings hung like ill-fitting mustard-colored leggings. She wore the same ensemble every day, old leather pumps, a straight wool skirt that came down to her calves, a white blouse, and a sweater over that. Way too many clothes for a normal person living on the equator. Clearly, Mrs. X was not normal. When she turned to profile, the first thing you noticed about her was her hook nose and the upper tilt of her head. She had very short blonde hair, which should have been fashionable, for this was the Twiggy time in fashion history, but it looked pokey on Mrs. X. She must have secretly worked out with her flatmate, the P.E. teacher, because she was surprisingly strong for someone so spindly and wee. Wherever she walked, she carried a very large stack of six or seven heavy, important-looking books, history books, I presume. But instead of opening these books and sharing them with us, she used them to announce her arrival, as if entering the room wasn't enough. Every Tuesday and Thursday... She was scheduled to teach us history. I never did find out which history I was missing out on. We were expected to sit and wait for her silently with our hands folded across our desk, ankles crossed, staring straight ahead. We sat so long that sweat dripped from our heads down into our eyes. Even with tears burning, we didn't dare to move to wipe them away. Mrs. X entered the classroom. Did you feel that? Every time as if she, and she alone, had been taxed with the tiresome task of schooling us, I mean, the world. She sighed more than she spoke. I kept thinking she wouldn't be so exhausted if she weren't carrying all those books. Maybe that's why she sighs, I told my parents. No one ever offers to carry her books. Huh, huffed Dad. Let her carry her own books. It's just girls' school, gosh sakes. The books were plainly heavy. She carried them like some horrible weapon that doubled as camouflage. They made her look terribly intimidating, which was tough to pull off at five feet tall, but she did it. She came through the open door, which had, which had been waiting just as fearfully as we, and with a vicious grin on her face, slammed the pile of books onto her desk as if she was dropping the atom bomb. After about two weeks of this, I started thinking, what the heck? Her 
primary complaint was that we were talking, disrespecting the whole institution, whatever that meant. Her first three words to us were always, too much noise. But in fact, no one ever made the slightest sound. She was most definitely the only person making noise around there. We wouldn't have dared. We weren't actually as, as stupid as she claimed. That woman was stealthy, if nothing else. If she caught you doing anything other than what you were instructed to do, you would become the instantaneous subject of the day's lesson for the entire time. Usually, though, she would enter the room, drop her bomb, assess the volume incorrectly, and then simply stand there and stare at us, glower at us. Her hands clasped in front where her chest should have been. She stared and stared and stared and, oh my God, I just fell asleep. Did she see me? Mr. Roald Dahl himself could not have painted a more absurd representation of an educator. And this was on a good day. So teach her my arse. On any day, we might see some action, but it was never anything we actually sought because it would have been at the expense of one of our classmates. I didn't wish Mrs. X on anyone because I couldn't believe her treatment of us. You'd think there might be some sort of kinship between us, all girls for one, but no, I found myself hiding behind my friends. It's fine, said my mom. She's teaching you about post-colonial oppression. I began missing the other adults in my life. Where were they when I needed them? Was no one watching over this woman? Apparently not. She called every single one of us a stupid gettle and used derogatory racial terms for every non-white, non-British girl. Being the only American assigned me a special seal. On a side note, I'm sorry, I represented us all so poorly during that time. Mrs. X was the first person from whom I heard some of those terms. Backdoor teacher she was, insidious. Her favorite lesson was to single out one girl for the day. She would be made to stand and take whatever Mrs. X chose to dish out. She mocked girls whose uniforms were shabby, especially if they weren't white-skinned girls. By some miracle, I was never made queen for a day, and I began to understand it probably wasn't going to happen either. And also, why Phaedra hated me so much. But that didn't ease my trepidation at all. I sure wasn't going to volunteer myself for anything just because I was white-skinned. Now, why the headmistress never walked in to observe her even once, I'll never know. Oh, oh, yes, I do. She was afraid of her, too. Mrs. X never opened one of those monster texts. Not one. She never intentionally imparted any information about history or any other subject even once. And yet, she did. She surely did. From her, we learned that British colonialism was still alive and well in East Africa. Meeting her gave me an implicit understanding of racism. It is ignorance. To think that she had such a wealth of knowledge at her feet, in her lap, but she couldn't see over the stack of books that preceded her. What a fool. I challenged my parents at the dinner table with real history mysteries. What do you think Mrs. X is like at home? How old do you think she is? Is she nice at parties? Why does she wear those ugly stockings? Do you think she gets splinters if you hugged her? You wouldn't hug her, would you? Would anyone? But at no point did anyone say to me, what about Egypt? Or did she mention Rome? A curious story came up about Mrs. X just two years after I left the school. She had an ex-husband who shall remain nameless for the family's sake. The story that came out in the country club rumor mills was that she had tried to shoot him. I guess, in retrospect, we girls got off easy. Mrs. X was deported back to England with no fanfare other than a loud bang. I like to imagine her there, tasked with the job of which she was so well trained, selling encyclopedias, door to door, educating the entire world.
That's what she would have done. Now, here's my call to action. Today is the last day that you can still get Jumbo Mama for free in the Kindle edition and for cheap, cheap in the paperback edition. Tomorrow, the prices go back up. So take advantage of it now. <clears throat> Don't forget, please, to follow me <clears throat> on Facebook and Instagram uh, at Jumbo Mama. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Mama Sarah's Storytime for Words, Punctuation Matters. And don't forget to go to Amazon.com for the full text. Now, remember this most important advice. You don't have to be a child to enjoy their books. For now, Kwaheria Koanana, which is a lovely way to say goodbye until I see you again.